I'm here right now outside of Bubby's where I got a phone call early this morning to go pick up some matzah. I guess Bubby has something planned. Let's go find out. Where's Bubby? Bubby is cooking. She's cooking? I have matzo for you. Oh, thank you. Let's see what she's cooking inside. Take it away, Bubby. When I need some good kosher food, there's only three words I need to know. Feed. Me. Bubby. especially for the women, and the men too, to help along. First of all, it's the beginning of spring, and it's families that get together after a long winter. Pesach is a very important holiday, because where would we be today if we didn't leave Egypt? A lot of things, but it's, it's, it's work, it's a hard work. Years and years ago, I remember everything had to be prepared from scratch. A lot of preparation. Today, even though there are a lot of prepared foods, however, a lot of them are expensive. And I remember the children, and even the grandchildren today, they're always hungry. Maybe because bread fills them more where matzah doesn't fill as much. And so I try to have something available constantly. And today we're going to make my apple matzah kugel. It's a very easy recipe, can be whipped up in no time, and should always be available in the refrigerator. You can serve it warm, you can serve it pariv, meaning with anything, or you can serve it milchik. It's good for a cup of coffee, with a glass of milk, with a cup of tea, you name it. It fills the gap. Instead of a pastry, it takes care of everything. And now, let's begin. I always like to prepare everything ahead of time, to have all the ingredients measured and everything ready. And you know, sometimes things don't come out just right, but at least I know that everything that, then if it didn't come out, I double check. Now, what did I do here? Did I miss this? Did I miss that? But you know something, this recipe, if it isn't exact, it'll still come out good, trust me. So the first thing you have to do is I preheat the oven. And I already preheated the oven for 350 degrees. Now I can take my time and get the rest. And the second I do is of course the matzah. Oh, th th this is the matzah oven brush. You know, I was running out of matzah. I made so many kugels and, and everything for Pesach and getting ready that, uh, how much is a box? Not, not much. So I called out when he was very thoughtful and nice and said, Bobby, okay, I just brought you a box. I was waiting for him. So the three matzahs, and the first thing you have to soak them. And it becomes alcohol and dough. This is what, I have my water ready. I break it in about four pieces. Just wet a little bit like this. And next I measured out a half a cup of sugar. And then I got the cinnamon ready, or a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon. And you can use either margarine or you can use a vegetable oil, whichever. I happen to use margarine. I have basic margarines, I used it. So I melt, put it on in the microwave for a couple of seconds and it, and it melted. Two tablespoons. And then eggs, three eggs. And remember, break one egg individually, make sure, and then you can, can put them all together. That's very important. And next, the lemon. Oh, let me tell you about what I do with my lemon. You know, I'm thrifty, and lemon has a wonderful flavor. So I only need about a half a teaspoon of lemon. Or well, maybe it's about a half a lemon, a little more. So what I do is I zest the whole lemon, 
and measure out what I need, and the rest I freeze. I put it in one of these little baggies and tie it, and put the lemon in the, in the freezer. And what happens is, for example, if I make baked paddock or cod, and I add a little bit of the lemon zest to it, it's, it's wonderful, and it takes no time. Uh, I like to use the, the uh, special uh, zest, uh, but you know, Passover, I'm limited. I'm not gonna go buy a whole household utensils, so I make do what I have in the house. And uh, very carefully scrape it out, and you have delicious lemon. So here, already I did a little bit before, there's my half teaspoon lemon. And then, sliced apples. And the apples I slice thin, and I hold about 12 slices for the decoration for the top. Let me show you how I do my apple. It isn't that difficult. The easiest way I found is if I cut the apple in quarters with the skin. Then it's easy. All I have to do is just cut the core right across. Make sure you don't leave any of the seeds in. Then it's easy to peel. You're only peeling a quarter of a time, which makes it a lot easier to do. And then, slice it very, turn it like this, slice it very thin slices. What I like to do is I make it so that I want you to try these things. And if you try these things, you know, then you'll be interested, you, you'll make it good. There's my apple. And this is the one and three quarters cup casserole that I also use. Oh, if you don't use the non-stick aluminum foil, make sure you grease it well so it'll be easy to take the kugel out. And now we'll begin the whole process. I have all my ingredients. I like to have all about 12 apple slices separate so that I can put them on top. It makes it pretty for the decoration and presentation. And so that is done. And the next thing, of course, is to take the matzo out, squeeze it, because it, you, you don't want to have to squeeze it. All the water out, but most of the water out. Because this is, like you say, your, your dough, the main ingredient. And that's about does it. And next, I beat the eggs. It doesn't have to be fancy. Add it to the matzo. And then, the lemon zest. And the sugar. And the cinnamon. And the margarine, or the whole vegetable oil, whichever you're using. And finally, the apple slices. Yeah, there's all the ingredients. And with a, you know, good mixing spoon so that it's easy to mix, stir the whole thing around. There. That looks good. Like nothing fancy. And now to place it in the pan. And this time I'm using my 8x8 eight eight pan lined. Very simple, not fancy. And now I'm going to smooth it a little bit up, gently, because you don't want it to flatten out too much. Just a little bit. There, that's enough. And now I'm going to add the extra slices, because when it finishes, it makes a much nicer appearance. Just kind of lined it up. And now I'm going to place it in the oven, 35 to 40 minutes, until it's slightly brown. It's time for the Yiddish word of the day. Bubby, what's today's Yiddish word? Well, today's Yiddish word, well, because it's getting to springtime. And what do you do in the springtime? You look at the pretty spring blossoms. It means go for a stroll, go for a walk. Take your partner or your best friend 
and go spazieren. Go for a walk. A perfect word at this time of year. Sounds like a lot of fun, actually. It is. It's enjoyable. So next time I want to tell someone that I want to go for a walk, I should say gehen spazieren. I can't say it. Come gehen with me. Spar gehen means go. Spazieren. Gehen spazieren. Gehen spazieren. Let's go. Let's gain passion. Now you're getting yeah, I know. Now I'm messing you up. Let's <laughs> gain spazieren. Let's go walk. Excellent. And just to mention yes. out there, I just can't believe it. We've got fans all over the world, and that includes our internet fans and even our fans over at JLTV. And we want to thank you for your patience with us as we've been trying to put together more episodes and even trying to get this book that we're putting together. Oh, and you know, I'm sorry, I keep repeating, but it's true. We have so many emails. I don't have a secretary. And, and you know, it takes time. And I haven't forgotten any of you. You're very close to me and dear. And I will do my best as soon as I can to answer emails. I know I'm way behind. But believe me, I mean the best. And if it's urgent and you have to have the message, either call our 911 call, as I've, we've gotten many calls, or if you feel that it's important and you want, you can wait, send another email. Eventually I'll catch up. We're, we're doing the best we can. We can try. And feel free to join us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Bubby, where we just reached 2,000 fans. And thank you so much, everyone. You know, it, I never would have believed, and you make me feel so wonderful, not that, that this is going well, but that I can help, and I reach so many people who, who I'm, I, they feel appreciated, and, and, and I feel good. I feel it's a mitzvah to everyone. If, Thank you so much. If you'd like to contact Bubby, use the information written right down here below. We'll be right back. Okay. Avram, what are you doing with the book? Uh, uh, Bubby, uh, well, we're in the joy of kosher.com. We've been nominated for Best Kosher Cookbook of 2011. My goodness, that's wonderful. So tell me, what do you have to do? I, I, that's very interesting. Well, we have to get our audience to go and vote for our book. And they have until January 11th to put their vote in. So we're hoping that our audience goes and shares the awards and also able to go and to put the votes in. Oh, that's wonderful. Everyone, I hope that you'll give us a vote and check out on us. It'll mean so much to us. And our book is doing well, and I hope you enjoy it. And if you haven't had it yet, go buy one and check it out. You'll love it. And help us with the vote. Thanks so much. Heavier, like you say, it's deeper. 
so I like to cut it in fourth, a good size portion. The main important is the taste. Who needs gourmet? The taste is what counts. And if the taste is good, it goes fast. And now I'll cut the other one. This one, if you see, it's a little thinner. So this one, I can make it in six pieces. Like say this will be my and oh I forgot to tell you I used a lot of paper plates on Passover. It's not that I'm lazy. It's just that I do so much stuff from scratch that if I can save washing dishes and make life a little easier for the week, that's what I like. And so I'm gonna put. You can have this plain with, and this I'm the one I'm gonna use a little bit sour cream, which gives it a nice flavor. Have a happy and healthy Pesach. Est gesund today. See you next time. Hi, my name is Hannah, and I'm calling you from Israel. I just spent two hours at my computer watching Feed Me Bubby shows. They are so wonderful. I have to tell you, I am a professional chef. I live in Eretz Israel. I run a cooking school for children, and I just was so entertained and just loved it. You reminded me, Ola Shalom, of my husband's Bubby, Bubby Clara. You look just like her. You, you cook just like her. It was really a wonderful, wonderful thing. Please keep up the good work. Bye.